with so many YouTubers suddenly trying, who previously actually were reporting truthfully about Meghan Markle, but suddenly these YouTubers have come out and are trying to clean up Meghan Markle's dirty act. Now, she was not a yacht girl. Now, she is this successful woman who was making a lot of money in suits. So, I decided to put an end to this bullshit because Meghan Markle ins has insulted and given the finger to the Commonwealth, the United Kingdom, who embraced her with such warmth and love in spite of all the reservations. And most of all, to our most amazing, magnificent icon of a woman, of a lady, our queen. She has given the finger to everybody and she's laughing about it. And now we have YouTubers irresponsibly following somebody's agenda, lying about Meghan Markle. So what better way I thought than to actually, I actually have in front of me the Wikipedia page of Meghan Markle. And I'm going to go through it and debunk absolutely everything that is here and laugh about it. And what is worse, this is from a woman who claims to have um, graduated from Northwestern University with uh, two double majors, one of them being international relations. Now it says here international studies. Probably they've been listening to us that we're ridiculing that she says international relations when in fact it's international studies. And just to repeat it once again, there's no such thing as a double major in international studies and theater. They're completely two opposite uh, disciplines. So, but let's get into this. Let's get into this because I'm going to show you what was Meghan Markle's last worst insult to our late queen right in front of the entire world. And she was allowed to get away with this because after the queen's funeral, Netflix mockumentary happened where she ridiculed the British culture and way of life. Let's get into this video. Medieval times, dinner and tournament. It was like that. Like I curtsied as though I was like. Pleasure to meet you, your majesty. Like, was that okay? When you go to Wikipedia page, for Megan, now she's Megan, Duchess of Sussex. This is what it says. Megan, Duchess of Sussex, Rachel Meghan Markle, we just saw how she ridiculed the queen, how it was medieval for her to, or demeaning for her to do a one second curtsy, no. She had, and I can guarantee you that she did not do that exaggerated thing. I can guarantee you that. And if she did, it's because she was trying to kiss the queen's ass because at that time she still was just dating Harry. Um, and I'm sure that the classes that she took in Pasadena were, um, would have told her, how, the guy who, who gave her the classes told her how to curtsy. And she knew, we've seen her do a curtsy in suits. We, she knew how to curtsy. She lived in Canada long enough, seen the face of the queen and the money long enough to know that she's there, that the queen is there, that everything, how to curtsy. But here she's mocking. She goes all the way down to ridicule a sign of respect to somebody representing us representing people and the entire commonwealth in the united kingdom that is a sign of respect tradition culture but no she had to mock it it goes here to say megan duchess of sussex born rachel megan markle in august 4th 1981 is an american member of the british royal family and former actress she is married to prince harry duke of sussex the younger son of king charles iii Megan was born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Her acting career began at Northwestern University. She played a part of Rachel Zane for seven, seven seasons in the American TV legal drama Suits. 
She also developed a social media presence, which included the TIG, a lifestyle blog. During the TIG period, Megan became involved in charity work focused primarily on women's issues and social justice. From what I remember, the TIG was all about fine dining and luxurious traveling and tips on how to, yeah, that's it. At the very late stages, when she had her eyes set on Prince Harry, she started to do that. But before that, no. And I just want to paraphrase Meghan Markle because I've heard some YouTubers, you have guys sent me some stuff, that Meghan Markle didn't have any need for her to be yachting. She went to Croatia to vacation. She was living with Trevor Engelson. She was married to Trevor Engelson. You know? Um, she... Why was she going to all these places? Why was she working as a caddy? As a caddy in, in, in on, on Croatia, or sorry, on Florida. She was working as a caddy to entertain the VIPs and she was loved. She was loved. And from what the woman said, she was already divorced, which means that Meghan Markle was already working in suits when she was doing uh, the caddy extra work you know, pay what need did she have to be caddying in Florida for all these VIPs when according to these YouTubers now she was a very successful uh, woman. She was not a successful woman. She had a supporting role in suits. Let's get real here. So for those of you who are, who are telling me that now, Meghan, basically, I don't understand these people, you know, who are saying that Meghan Markle was a su successful actress because she was not. She never won any role on any, 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 any rewards or any award sorry for her for any of the roles that she ever played okay she was not a successful actress she was not a millionaire she did have need to go and serve as a caddy in florida for vip golfers and do the rounds there she did not get involved in philanthropy out of her goodwill no because she needed she saw that her acting career was not going anywhere and she was sick and tired of she was the woman apparently behind the act working actress blog and that working actress blog was pretty dark the way she described how she had to kiss people with smelly breath how she was treated like crap so it's either or okay so no she didn't go to please keep in mind that she lived with trevor engelson for nine years eight or nine years before she married him she was living with trevor engelson when she was doing all these travels and that apparently she was caddying in Florida for these VIP people going on yachts. There's that famous tweet of the guy, hey, Meghan Markle, are you available for, for the yacht week? We know what that yacht week means. And the guy actually has come out because he was a gay yachter. <laughs> so I, I, it blows my mind. In my channel, I know I don't have very many subscribers. I know I get a lot of hate. I get compared to a lot of these YouTubers who are now turning around and trying to portray Meghan Markle as a saint, pretty much, as a very successful woman, which she's not. I have always stood my ground on things that I believe to be true. If I, if I find out that I was wrong, I will come out and say, shit, you know, I'm sorry. But in this case, I don't think I am. <sighs> okay. It says here the tick period. Megan became involved in charity work focused primarily on women's issues and social justice. She was married to American film producer Trevor Engelson from 2011 until their divorce in 2014. That's three years, but prior to that, they lived together for almost seven, eight years. Megan retired from acting upon her marriage to Prince Harry in 2018 and became known as the Duchess of Sussex. They have two children, really? I would like to see those children. Not the children, the paperwork. Archie and Betty, and Betty. In January 2020, the couple stepped down as working royals and later settled in California. In October 2020, they launched Archwell Inc., an American public organization that focuses on nonprofit activities and, creati and creative media ventures. This is such, such a misleading sentence because they're trying to make it look like they're, they, 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 they focus on nonprofit activities and creative media ventures, but they put the nonprofit to kind of imply that the creative media ventures are nonprofit, which is bullshit. Nothing these people have done 
is nonprofit. They have kept at least 95% of that, okay? And they have used charities um, that don't know any better, that don't know about Meghan Markle and Harry. They don't know how bad they are, you know, and, and they think of royalty. And Prince Harry pretty much is riding on the coattails of his mother's true humanitarian uh, background because Princess Diana, for all her faults, she was a true humanitarian. I mean, there was every poor of her scream humanitarian. This woman did not take any commercial ventures or anything like that. Now, it says here, in the following year, she released a picture book for children, The Bench, and launched, but they don't say she donated any money from that bench. No, she kept every cent of it because why not? She bought most of the copies <laughs> and launched a podcast, Archetypes, which miserably failed to the point that the highest paid executive called them lazy fucking grifters. If you can't stand a swear word or two, you shouldn't be watching my channel because occasionally I will swear. And I, but I still find myself, I don't find myself to be less of a lady and I don't find myself to be less honest just because I don't pretend to speak with a posh accent. Okay. Um, and launched a podcast archetypes. Meghan and Harry filmed an interview with Oprah Winfrey, which was broadcast in March, 2021 in a Netflix docu-series, Harry and Meghan, which was released in December, 2022. Docu-series implies factual, which is not. Nothing in that thing was factual. Everything was made up, was fantasy, was vulgarity at its finest. It was disgusting. It was disgusting in my very humble opinion. It was trashing of the Queen while they of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust organization, while Harry advertised later on for the, its better up thing where he earned a pretty penny. And then they were trashing the Queen's Commonwealth Trust when they got this bozy asshole and they got this skanky Afia lady or whoever it was, because she's irrelevant in, in, my, in my book, to basically claim that Queen's Commonwealth Trust was a 2.0 colonization thing. While Harry and Meghan were president and vice president of said organization. Okay? Yeah, that's Meghan Markle with Melissa McCarthy making fun of our queen, the British culture, the tea. It's really funny, isn't it? I mean, absolutely zero respect to a nation and a lady who showed her love, compassion by allowing her to come in. So now we're gonna get to the fictional part of Meghan Markle's early life and education. Um, Rachel Meghan Markle was born on August 4th, 1981 at West Park Hospital in Canuga Park, Los Angeles, California. To Doria Raglan, a social worker and former makeup artist. That Doria Raglan is not a social worker, okay? She's not. She, sorry, I'm trying to adjust that. She's not a social worker. Um, she never got the license. Um, yes, she worked as, a, as an assistant makeup artist. Uh, she was not a makeup artist herself. Um, and she never got a license as a social worker. That's another lie, okay? and former makeup artist, and Thomas Markle Sr., an Emmy Award-winning television lighting director and director of photography. Absolutely true. This part is true. Megan identifies as mixed race. Uh-uh, that's not, that's not what she said on the Netflix, that she had never been treated like a black woman. Not only that, um, Shalon Lester very openly has said that she identified as Caucasian, even her own agent, didn't know she was mixed race. This is why he kept get looking for, he, th he thought she was a suntan California girl, you know, who sunbathed a little bit and you know, he never thought. And it wasn't until much years later that she told him when she couldn't get roles in, <laughs> in, in, in movies, she told him, well, I'm biracial now. Okay. 
and answering questions about her background with my dad is Caucasian and my mom is African American. You know, it's amazing that Megan didn't talk about her mother and that you in inter you in speech she gave. She only talked about her father. Her parents separated when she was two years old and divorced four years later. She has a close relationship with her mother. Yes, her accomplice. Thomas Markle Sr. worked as a director of photography and lighting for General Hospital and married with children. Now, in a video before that I've done, I think I've done three videos where I mentioned that Meghan Markle had a walking part in Married with Children, and I was trashed for it. And guess what? Suddenly, the newspapers are reporting that Meghan Markle indeed had a, a little part on Married with Children, an unspeaking part. So I guess I'm not such an imbecile after all, you know, because I did talk about this. I did like three videos where I said that even Mr. Markle got her um, a, a walking part and married with children as one of Kelly's friends. Now the newspapers, shocking, breaking news. Meghan Markle had an unspeaking role in married with children as a child. They even showed a picture of her. And they call themselves journalists. And Meghan occasionally visit the set of married with children as a child. How many times has she said that she lived, pretty much lived there? Um, she has been estranged from her father and paternal half-siblings, Samantha and Thomas. She hasn't been estranged. Let's call it for what it is. She ghosted her own father because he no longer served any purposes because Meghan Markle is a psychopath, a sociopath, a malignant psychopath. Okay? So let's call it for what it is. She ghosted her own father because probably her father would have been shocked at the lie she's telling the royal family for some unknown reason. Growing up in View Park, Windsor's Hill, Windsor Hills, Los Angeles, Markle attended Hollywood Little Red Schoolhouse. Please be aware that that was a very expensive kindergarten or preschool, which Mr. Markle paid for. But look at the misleading part here. Both her parents contributed to raising her until the age of nine, implying that Doria was paying for Meghan Markle school or anything like that, which is absolutely, I mean, this is, this is a biography. I, this is not a biography. This is fiction, you know, like this is a work of fiction because Doria didn't have any money. Mr. Markle was paying her money and he was paying for all of Meghan Markle's expenses, including the school. So she says, that, it says here, both her parents contributed to raising her until the age of nine. And listen to this, after which her father was left in charge of caring for her as her mother pursued a career. I'd like to know what high power career that was that Doria left her daughter um, which merited Doria leaving her daughter, abandoning her daughter at nine years of age. Was she a president? Did she suddenly become the queen of England? Maybe the queen of Nigeria. Let's not forget that Megan is 43% a Nigerian. Maybe that's what it was. Did she become a spy for the CIA? That would put her daughter's life in danger? From what I understand, she either was in jail, was, was uh, According to Tom Bauer, she was a drug dealer on the set of uh, Married with Children or whatever, or the one, wherever Mr. Markle wasn't working, and he met her there. Or she was a travel agent, and some people say that she was even a flight attendant. The whole point of it all is that no, even the Queen of England did not abandon, abandon her kids. You know, that says it all. So which career was Doria pursuing? So here it says that Doria did leave Meghan Markle at the age of nine. So I guess that the bullshit that they sold on the Netflix mockumentary that Doria raised Meghan Markle in a, in a, in a, that with very powerful, powerful black women empowerment thing was all lies. At age 11, she and her classmates wrote to Procter Gamble to gender neutralize a dishwashing soap commercial on national television. 
This is, you know why this was corrected, that it wasn't just Meghan Markle? Because people in her school complained, and they have come out and said, no, it wasn't just Meghan Markle. It was a class project, okay? So I'm going to repeat that. At age 11, she and her classmates wrote to Procter & Gamble to gender neutralize a dish washing soap commercial on national television. It didn't work. So it wasn't Meghan Markle who wrote there and, oh, Meghan Markle changed a multi-million do dollar um, advertising campaign for a Fortune 500 company. No, it wasn't like that. Okay? They don't elaborate any more on that, but it's been clarified that she was not the one who wrote. It was a class project, like I have been saying, like many of us have been saying. Markle took part in plays and musicals at the school where her father helped with lighting. Yes, poor Mr. Markle had the embarrassing task of offering his Emmy Award winning services so his little talentless princess could be participate or could participate in pl school plays because she was not talented enough. During her teenage years, she worked at a local frozen yogurt shop and later as a waitress and babysitter. We know that she never worked at the frozen yogurt. The babysitting thing, and I've spoken about this before, was when she used to visit the set of ba Married with Children, the other actors who did bring their children along as well um, would pay her to play with their kids, but it wasn't really babysitting, it was just to give her pocket money and call it babysitting, but she really wasn't babysitting. They were on the set of Mary with Children, and she would get money there from the other actors for her hanging around with the actor's children. Okay? Um, let me see, let me see, where was I? And a waitress. She never waitressed. That is absolute lies. She also volunteered at a soup kitchen in Skid Road, Los Angeles. That was her father telling her to go there. And also was part of the school project. It was mandatory of the school, you know, Sacred Heart, which was another very expensive private school that her father paid for. In 1999, she was admitted to Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois, where she joined Kappa Kappa Gamma Sorority, the whitest of the whitest of the whitest sorority with other members of Kappa Kappa Gamma, Markle did volunteer work with the Glass Slipper Project. After her, after her junior year, she secured an internship as a junior press officer at the American Embassy in Buenos Aires with the help of her uncle Mike, Michael Markle. No, it was not a, as a junior press officer. That is wrong. She was just an intern at the embassy, fetching coffee, photocopying. She was not writing press releases because that's not done writing for an embassy, the embassy, they issued their own press statements, which are governmental press statements. They don't let an intern do that. That is absolute BS. I know because I worked in embassies. And, and trust me, when an embassy puts something out, it's not because of a junior intern. And, and a, an intern is <laughs> not a junior press officer. And it's not because of an intern. She was not a junior press officer at the American embassy. That's in Buenos Aires. With the help of her uncle, Michael Markle, at least they give him credit for that, and considered a political career. However, she did not score high enough in the foreign service officer. She didn't consider a political career. She wanted a political career, but because she failed the foreign service officer test, um, she could not proceed further with the U.S. State Department. That should be the correct thing to do and say. However, um, yeah. So once she failed the test, she returned to Northwestern University. She also attended a study abroad program in Madrid. Funny enough that she claims that she's, she learned fluent Spanish in Argentina, but she has never claimed to have learned fluent Spanish in Spain. And she claims she was there for an exchange program for three months. Yet she barely, I don't think she's ever mentioned being in Spain for that program. Please correct me if I'm wrong. In 2003, Markle, this is one of the biggest lies. In, in 2003, Markle earned her bachelor's degree 
with a double major in theater and international studies from Northwestern School Communication. And they reached to that conclusion because of uh, who is Meghan Markle, everything we know about Prince and Harry's girlfriend. This is the Daily Telegraph. This is um, an article and from Andrew Morton's book. But this also is a lie because Meghan Markle, um, she earned a bachelor's degree in communications with a major in theater. Okay. International studies is not a major. It's a, it's a bachelor's degree. You, you get a bachelor's degree in international studies at Northwestern University. I did a full video on that where I even exposed the email response I got from Northwestern University where they told me that international, because Megan is still claiming that she got a double major in international relations. And Northwestern University has clarified that there's no such thing as a major in international relations. There's a master's in international relations, never a major. Okay, so it's and it's incredible here. It says that she earned her bachelor's degree with a double major in theater and international studies from Northwestern School of Communications. The School of Communications does not teach international studies. Are we clear? This is like saying that the medical school was teaching was teaching aerospace engineering. It's not going to happen. The School of Communication, and you can go Google it. You can go to the, I've, I've posted this. You can go to the Northwestern School of Communication. So you will see that international studies is not a major. International studies, it's from actually even a different college, which is about 10, 15 minute uh, drive from there. So all of this, why am I getting to all of this? Because I've had enough of people insulting our queen. I've had enough of YouTubers and news outlet media irresponsibly changing the story and the narrative of Meghan Markle, okay? Um, this is a woman who, please understand, that she didn't marry, um, what's his name, Trevor Engelson in 2011, but she had been living with him for seven, eight years, okay? Um, <laughs> When she was between 2006 and 2007, she worked as briefcase girl, 34 episodes on the U.S. version of the game Deal or No Deal. She was already with Trevor Anglesson, okay? When she was caddying in California and in, in, in Florida, she had just divorced Trevor Anglesson or was in the process of divorcing. Well, she, according to some YouTubers now, was an incredibly successful actress who didn't need to do those things. She didn't need to yacht. She yachted and she met Andrew. She yachted and she very well acquainted with Prince Andrew, with Marcus Anderson, her pimp, I mean, I mean, her friend. This is the best. Red flesh dragon fruit with lemon is the healthiest thing ever. It's so delicious. So, It's here, early relationship and first marriage. Markle, an American film producer, Trevor Engelson, began dating in 2004, and they moved in. They were married in Ocho Rios, Jamaica, on August 16th, 2011. They separated in July 2013 and concluded a no-fault divorce in February 2014, citing irreconcilable differences. Markle's subsequent live-in relationship with Canadian celebrity chef and restaurateur Corey Vitello ended in May 2016 after almost two years. No. Corey Vitello, she did not end the relationship with Corey Vitello in May 2016. Corey Vitello was still living with her at the end of July. I think even for her birthday in August 4, she was still living with him, 2016 because Harry would not commit to her. And therefore, you know, she, you know, in case things didn't work out with Harry, she would have that. Second marriage and motherhood. In mid 2016, Markle began a relationship with Prince Harry. They make it sound like they didn't date, that the relationship started full on. There was no dating period, apparently. And according to the couple, they first connected via, with each other via Instagram. That's not what they said, said in their engagement interview, was it? Then they said that they were introduced by a mutual friend who should remain nameless to protect her privacy. 
And they have also said that they were set up on a blind date by a mutual friend in July 2016. And yet we saw Meghan Markle posting those pink peonies on May or March 2016, thanking and feeling loved, and the very same peonies from in July 1st. And somebody, on, this is on her Instagram account. I've done a video about that. I'll, I'll post that. It's called The Rise and Fall of Meghan Markle. You can look at all the pictures. I'll put it here. On July 1st, uh, somebody, I think it was herself, sent herself pink peonies saying feeling loved. And somebody, I believe it's one of her fake accounts, saying, oh, is that from our prince? This is on July 1st. So how would anybody know about her dating a prince on July 1st if she was just introduced to Harry on July 1st? That's bullshit. They met in 2015, nothing came of it. And they hooked up on gen at the end of January 2016, but nothing came of it. <sighs> on November 8th, Eight days after the relationship was made public by the press, the prince directed his communications secretary to release a statement on his behalf to express personal concern about pejorative and false comments made about his girlfriend mainstream media by internet trolls. Keep in mind that it was, I think, Camilla Tomini that released, who broke the news about the relationship. And even after the news came out, because it was just a girl that, she, he, that Prince Harry was dating, Nobody really paid attention. And because nobody was really paying attention, this is why Meghan Markle ordered Harry to issue a statement, calling him, telling him that she was being persecuted by, prosecuted by, by Paps, which we know it's a lie. So are you telling me, and I've looked, I have looked between the 31st of October, 2016, to, uh, sorry, um, let me see, when was this? And yeah, 2016. I've looked from, if you look, if you Google news about Meghan Markle from October 30, 000, October 31st, 2016 till, till November 8th, which is when Harry issued that communication. To, and bear in mind that Camilla Tomini's article came up during the weekend, so nobody really paid attention to that. So there are absolutely no articles about Meghan Markle other than the ones that she wanted to put out there that she was dating Prince Harry. Okay, so I don't understand who these internet trolls were, nothing, because until, you know what, I found out that he was dating somebody when he issued that communique. <sighs> Later, in a letter to British media regulator, Markle's representatives complain about harassment from journalists. Basically, we were calling out the bullshit and the lies. And then, in September 2007, Markle and Prince Harry appeared together in public in Toronto at the Invictus Games. Please keep in mind that Meghan, uh, Meghan Markle, which is now a pattern of disrespect. When Harry went in 2016 for the Queen's Jubilee to the Caribbean, remember in 2016, uh, Harry spent two weeks, in December, the first two weeks of December, representing the Queen with Rihanna and everything. Meghan Markle got busy online. She was posting things on Instagram, releasing articles, paying to have re articles released about Harry's girlfriend while Harry's in, in the Caribbean, Meghan Markle's Harry's girlfriend. This is against palace orders because she was ordered to shut the hell up because she was not Prince Harry's girlfriend, really. And after that, Prince Harry didn't go and spend New Year's with Meghan Markle. No, she took off to Iceland alone on her own in other areas as well. Or was she alone? Who knows? We know she crashed that wedding in 2017, um, and that's disgusting. Now, Meghan Markle has spoken out against Brexit. Meghan Markle has spoken in favor of abortion. Meghan Markle, I think while she went to Scotland or Ireland, I, can't, I think it was Scotland, she was talking about pro-abortion and how everybody was. You know what, whatever your stance or your views are on that, as a royal, you have to shut up because royal family, and the reason you don't understand is not that they're allowed to express their views, it's because they're supposed to remain neutral. Neutrality is the success of the royal family. Not because they're not allowed to think or feel or have any other issues or proud, I'm sure they do. And they feel very strongly about it. But because the queen represents everybody. The monarchy represents the United Kingdom and Commonwealth, which is a bunch of nations with different cultures, different skin colors. They cannot pick a side because they represent all of us. Canadians, you know, uh, I mean, Caribbean, 
African, you know, they, they represent us all. They can't say, oh, you know what, we're going to do this. Yeah, No, they can't because it's such a multicultural environment and set of beliefs, set of nations that they have to remain neutral. Okay? After she, and their political views, and here they go on talking about after she returned to the United States as an ele, ele, eligible voter, this is after Mexit, she released a video with her husband encouraging others to register for the 2020 United States presidential election on National Voter Registration Day. Um, uh, some media outlets took it as an implicit endorsement of the Democratic candidate Joe Biden. Mm, I wonder why. In t October 2021, she penned an open letter to Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi advocating for paid leave for parents. She did not advocate as Rachel Mega Markle, and this is a very misleading, disrespectful thing. She wrote it as Duchess of Sussex from the office of the Duchess of Sussex, which has huge legal ramifications because basically she was used, this was on behalf of the royal, a royal household when using a title. Her remarks were met by a backlash from Republican representatives, Jason Smith and Lisa McLean, who found, it, who found her statement out of touch and criticized her interference with American politics while utilizing her British royal titles. I will make another correction. Meghan Markle will never have a royal title because she's not of royal blood. She's not a blood royal. She married to one for now, and um, she gets to use her husband's courtesy title because all of the royal titles, including the prince titles, are honorary and can be taken by the stroke of a pen from the monarch. Megan has reportedly lobbied senators from both parties on the issue of paid family leave, including Democratic Senators Patty Murray and Kirsten Gillibrand, as well as Republican Senators Shelley Moore Capito and Susan Collins. She has also publicly spoken in support of federal voting elections. In February 2022, she voiced her support for her, the Supreme Court nomination of Ketani Brown Jackson. This lady who refuses to admit that, who doesn't, she doesn't know what a woman is. In June 2022, she publicly supported Moms Demand Action, an organization which campaigns for safer gun laws in the U.S. In the same month, in the in interview with Jessica Yelling of For Vogue, Megan criticized the Supreme Court of the United States' decision that abortion is not prote a protected constitutional right and voiced her support for the proposed Equal Rights Amendment. I do not have a problem with, I know, I'll get a bunch of sugars here. I do not have a problem with Meghan Markle getting political. I do not give a rat's ass. And I'm gonna be very vulgar here. I do not give a fuck about Meghan Markle's political views. Rachel Meghan Markle is a meaningless rat. I do not care. She's completely entitled as Rachel Megham, as 42-year-old year D-list failed actress, con artist, and low-class grifter to be politically engaged as Rachel Megham Markle. Where I do have an issue is that she's done all of these things as using a royal title in a foreign country. You say, oh, she's American. Yes, but she's not using her American identity, her USA identity. By the way, the 13th Amendment, it has, still hasn't been ratified. I hope it is, but it's there. It says that in a, no American can use foreign titles to interfere in politics without the express consent of Congress. Even Ronald Reagan, who was awarded an honorary <laughs> knighthood or a sir by, by, by the queen because they were such great friends, he didn't pledge allegiance to her. This is why he did not use the titles because in order for him to, to get that, you need to pledge allegiance. So this is why he was honorary and he was never called sir. But Congress authorized that honorary titles under certain provisions. <sighs> A 
it's in Ireland. It's in Ireland where Meghan Markle voiced her things about the abortion thing. Now, in January 2020, Meghan and Harry returned to the UK from a vacation in Canada and announced that they were stepping back from the role as senior members of the royal family and the queen didn't own the word royal. I'm just made, I just introduced that sentence there. And would balance their time between the United Kingdom and North America. A statement released by the palace, by the palace confirmed that the Duke and Duchess were to cease to undertake royal duties as representatives of the Queen and would therefore no longer receive their relevant financial support. The couple, would, and this is very important, all the controversy that you guys are happy that the, 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 His Royal Highness was removed from Prince Harry's thing, the couple would retain the HRH styles but not use them. Harry it's still his royal highness and by extension Meghan is her royal highness and this has a lot of tax and constitutional ramifications way beyond that you've been led to believe okay the formal role of the duke and duchess was subject to a 12-month review period and then in march 2021 Meghan's final public solo engagement as a senior royal was a visit to Robert Clark, Clark School on March 7, 2020 in Dagenham ahead of International Women's Day. She and Harry attended the Commonwealth Day service at Westminster Abbey on March 9, 2020, which was their last engagement as a couple before they officially stepped down on March 31st. Two years later, they made their first official appearance in the UK in June 2020. 2022 while attending the Platinum Jubilee National Service of Thanksgiving. They visited the UK and Germany in September 2022 for a number of charity events in Manchester and Dusseldorf. On September 8, 2022, while Meghan and Harry were in London preparing to attend a charity event, Queen Elizabeth II died at Balmoral Castle in Scotland. Yes. <sighs> yes. It is a disgusting. I am trying, I am desperately trying here, guys, to understand or to convey to you the appalling nature of Harry and Meghan Markle and the fact that they're still on that royal website. The fact that this woman disrespected the queen. Would you like to know what her last insult to Her Majesty the Queen was? It wasn't that mock cursy. No, it wasn't that she did at the Netflix documentary. It was not. It wasn't that. That was her final insult. It wasn't even her calling colonization 2.0. It wasn't that. No, it wasn't that. It wasn't even the Oprah interview. No. The worst insult was this. Yes, that woman, when Meghan Kersey, before the Queen's coffin inside the church and when Harry bowed his head to the Queen's coffin inside that church they already knew that they had talked trash about her they already knew that they had filmed the episodes of Netflix where they were mocking everything the Queen stood for to me that was the worst insult ever that they were even allowed to be there to me, but that's to me because I'm a very old fashioned person. But can you imagine you're a snake? You know that you walk into the house of the Lord with the queen's coffin and Meghan Markle takes that deep curse. Probably that's this very same curse that she was mocking the queen about. And when she took that curse, she was probably smirking under her face, under her 
that nasty looking hat because she knew what was coming. She knew what was coming and she knew that she was telling the queen, she was giving the finger to the queen, the commonwealth, right in the queen's, in the church with the queen's coffin in front of her. She was saying, F you, her majesty. F you, grandma, because she has never referred to the queen with her proper title, her majesty, the queen. It's always Harry's grandma to diminish, belittle, who she was, this iconic woman. The reason for that is because the Queen died September 8, 2022, and they premiere this on December 8, 2022, the Netflix series. Megan goes on to say she was unprepared. This is the very same woman. I did, I apologize for such a long thing, but this is the very same woman who claims to have had an international studies major from Northwestern University. Northwestern University is a very good university and their international studies bachelor program is extensive. And one of the major core courses is British history and monarchy because they're so interlinked with the United States and also worldwide. Uh, it would be would, she would have been able to pass that foreign officer's test had she really been studying that. So how, how I ask you, how on earth are Harry and Meghan allowed to continue giving the finger to all of us? How? Harry's coming on September 7th to the Well Child Foundation, the day before the Queen died. It should be, you know, I watched The Crown and there's one episode where the, the queen, allegedly, which is true because he, I, probably it didn't happen that way, but um, the Duke of Windsor, when he abdicated, he could only come back to the United Kingdom with the queen's permission or the king's, the monarch's permission. And he was denied, so he could never return. This is why he never returned afterwards uh, to the United Kingdom until he died, because he was not allowed to come back. I fully believe that Harry should be stripped of all titles. I, pr being a prince is not a birthright. It was, there's a la letters patent created that created Prince Harry, which created Henry, prince. Just like there's a letters patent that created Charles the prince. It wasn't automatic. There was, a, yeah, it was given verbally, but there was a letters patent. There's a letters patent created for each and every one of all the royal people, the royal prince and princesses. There was a letter created for Prince George. It's, I think it was registered um, like eight weeks later. And the same thing for Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis. And as we can see, the monarch does have absolute, uh, parliament has answered us at the end of this very long video. And I apologize for this. At the end of this very long video, I will leave you again, once again, the screenshot of the answer from Parliament to the UK petitions about asking Parliament to strip Harry of all royal titles. And in black and white, in their website, it says that Parliament has nothing to do with honors and that in any case, any styles and titles are absolutely up to the monarch. I've had YouTubers that for a couple of years were telling you that it was so complicated that it's up to Parliament. I still hear royal commentators say that. And I'm surprised because Parliament, all you have to do is go to the Parliament office, uh, to the UK Parliament uh, petition page, which is official, and they will tell you, no, <laughs> we have nothing to do with that. A letters patent, it's all that is needed. Because with a letters patent, the Queen granted the princess and prince titles to, to Charlotte and Louis. If, if the queen ha couldn't amend that and needed parliamentary p permission, there would have been a parliamentary discussion about Charlotte and Louis getting those titles. But of course not. All the queen had to do and did was issue a letters patent granting Charlotte the title of princess, princess and the style HRH and the same thing to Louis. You know, the queen decreed that 
all of the children of Prince, all, all of Prince William's children would have, would enjoy the HRH style, the dignity of the HRH style, and would be titled prince or princess. That went against the 1917 letters patent. And the year prior, in December 2012, the queen had, because the way bills uh, are passed in parliament, and so you know, Parliament can't just say, okay, we're going to put this bill forward. No, they send it to the queen, to the monarch. The monarch reads the bill, and the monarch decides whether or not that bill will be read in Parliament. So for all of the, even though it's a constitutional monarchy, the monarch decides what bills are discussed in Parliament or not. This is why a lot of times people were criticizing because they would say the queen would uh, would would grant would, would allow certain bills to be talked about and she would have inside info that would allow her to to get benefit financially. She never did. Charles did. But um, but so so once the queen they har the queen hardly ever rejects the bill because it's just a formality. So the queen um, would read, yeah, you can read this in Parliament. Or the monarch can request for something to be amended or changed. It hardly ever, it ne it's never denied. The only time where there was a constitutional crisis was when Parliament demanded of King George VI, uh, the Queen's father, to not grant Edward any royal titles. They demanded, and there's a letter, and I've done a video about it. They demanded that he he was he be turned into a private citizen, he, that he should be Edward Windsor, you know, um, and the king refused. The king refused, and there was nothing Parliament could do because, as Parliament has repeatedly stated in writing, all royal titles, and honors, and styles are up to the monarch. So, in spite of the fact that 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 you know that Parliament urged King George the sixth to turn Edward into a private citizen, the king refused, and the constitutional crisis was when Parliament put their foot down and said that they would not that they would not offer him because this is what you guys don't get. I will leave this link because it's very interesting for you to see it. It's in the video description, or no, I'll leave it as a screenshot. This is in the royal family's website. Yes, Charles was the next in line when the queen died. But the interesting part here is that Parliament has to offer it to the, to the person. Because Parliament has the option to decide. You know what? It's, there's already precedent and it's here. You'll see it. Please watch this because it's actually from the royal website. Because it tells you that the succession line is there. But Parliament has to offer the next person in line, the throne. Because they, there's already precedent that they offered it not to the next in line, but to the one that they thought would do a better job. So why are we having Harry and Meghan Markle? Why are these YouTubers, and the reason why I'm doing this very long thing is because I am very worried because I know many of you follow these YouTubers who are like a flag pretend to be royal experts. And please go take a look at what they've said to you for the past two years. Some of you even came into my channel and would trash me, and follow me, call me ignorant, whatever. That's okay. You're entitled to your opinion. And when I, when I kept saying all the queen needed to do was sign a, a letter, letters patent, and turn Harry into Henry Mountbatten Windsor, and Meghan Markle would become Mrs. Mountbatten Windsor with no titles. I was trashed. No, this other YouTuber, that is a YouTuber, this legal expert, blah, 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 blah. This royal expert. And oddly, when the Queen passed, these very same YouTubers stated in their own YouTube channel that all that needed to be done is for King Charles just to write a letter. With the stroke of a pen, he could turn Harry into a private citizen. The very same YouTuber, YouTubers, who for, to for two years had been saying that it's impossible, it's an act of parliament. Why am I worried about this? Why are these two disrespectful people, Harry and Meghan Markle, allowed to continue disrespecting us all? People said it's impossible Queen Elizabeth would ever be queen. 
It was impossible for Queen Elizabeth I to ever be queen. Let's not forget that she was the bastard child of a beheaded queen, who likelihood of becoming queen was as remote as Harry ever becoming king. It was even more unlikely at the time, given the times back then, for Queen Elizabeth I to ever exist. That was a complete impossibility. And it happened. She turned out to be a great queen, just like our amazing Queen Elizabeth. However, I don't think Harry would be a great Henry the Ninth. But I could be wrong. And you don't understand that these YouTubers are not trying to sway and use their platform to sway you into looking at Harry and, and Meghan in a positive light. Because the Regencies Act, which was just amended in 2023, states there's no Catherine in there. And I don't know why these YouTubers are lying to you. If you look at the Regencies Act in 2023, which was amended, I, I did a video about it. I posted it there. I posted the screenshots for you to see. It states that it is the next in line over the age of 21. If anything were to happen to Charles and Prince William and King and George is, of, of, uh, is not 18 years of age, it's the next in line who would become regent, not Catherine, because it's the next uh, blood royal over the age of 21 in the line of succession who would become regent king until George reaches the age of 18. And who is that? Harry. The Succession Act could be easily amended if people request an amendment to the Succession Act. You can write a UK parliamentary petition demanding that only royals physically residing in the United Kingdom and being born in the United Kingdom can be in the line of succession. Okay? You can do that. You can petition that. I can't do it because I'm not a resident of the United Kingdom nor a citizen of the United Kingdom. So by just saying, just like the Queen said, because when the Queen, when the Queen in December 2012 asked Parliament to please change um, the succession line, the Succession Act from gender to primogeniture, they did it within three months. They did it within three months by March. 2013, right before Princess Charlotte was born, it was quickly passed in Parliament, and by 2015, it was law in all Commonwealth countries and realms. So, right to your, because I can see where this is going. They're positioning Harry. They're positioning Harry. This man is being allowed to exploit the Queen's anniversary. Um, the royal family, from what I understand, they don't want to do anything decent. They don't want to commemorate the iconic life of this woman. I don't know why. I don't know why. Because, of course, we're only... I know what you're going to say that uh, the Queen Elizabeth didn't do it, uh, didn't, didn't commemorate her father's passing, but the Queen, El Queen Elizabeth is something completely different. You know, this... Shit. This lady gave us 70 years of her life, if not more. The least we can do is a little commemoration. I will be doing a live on that day. But it's incredible. I don't know if you agree with me. But the queen deserves better. She does not deserve that disrespect. And that final insult of Meghan kneeling before her coffin inside the house of the Lord knowing full well that just less than three months later, she would be trashing everything about her. It's the worst insult ever. And that they're going to be, because if you look at it, Prince Harry will be at the Well Child's Award on the 7th and on the 9th at Invictus Games Foundation in Dusseldorf. How much more disrespectful is going to be? And you can count that we will get a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of press about Harry and Meghan Markle. I wouldn't be surprised if Meghan Markle put something out on the 7th just to uh, eclipse Harry's because now she's shown that she wants to eclipse Harry and the Queen. I apologize for making such a long thing and please do look at the pictures I will leave for you. And yes.